This fanless six two and a half gig Ethernet platform has an Intel Core i5 Alder Lake processor with upgraded graphics, and it's actually pretty darn cheap compared to the alternatives. But this is a unit that drove us absolutely mad during testing, and that's why the video on it has been a little bit late. However, when we got it working, it's a lot better than we thought it was gonna be. But, but hold on, let, let's back up for a sec. Hey guys, this is Patrick from STH, and this is the fanless Alder Lake platform from Chang Wang. Now, I mentioned in the introduction that this thing has a lot of really great hardware features, but on the other hand, you're also going to have a couple headaches, especially if you don't watch this video. And this has something inside that I am super excited about. It has an Intel Core i5-1235U. And you might ask, well, Patrick, why are you so excited about that? Well, that has only two performance cores with hyper-threading, so that's two cores, four threads, but it also has the eight cores that are efficient cores. So it kind of takes something that are like efficient cores and you get eight of them, which is pretty darn good. And then you also get two performance cores that are Alder Lake cores. So you get something that is pretty similar to like what you would get in a desktop processor in terms of single thread performance. This thing has kind of like the best of both worlds and it's super interesting what we found when we looked at the hardware platform. Now at STH, we've been doing a number of these little mini PCs, but we've mostly focused on the efficient core only version. So those are like, you know, the J6413s, or the N5000 or 5105s or something like that. And so what I wanted to do was take a look at what you get if you went to a higher level unit. And I just wanna say thank you to the STH YouTube members. Your support allows us to buy these things and give an objective review. With that, let's get to the hardware. Okay, let's start with just the IO on this. The first thing that you'll see on this unit that's a little different from some of the other ones that we've looked at, especially if you know this looks like a router or firewall box, you're, you're gonna see that we have two display outputs. We actually have an HDMI port as well as a display port here. And this system, I will say, came with Windows 11 Pro installed. So this was actually set up as a desktop when we got it. You still have the power button, the clear CMOS button, and then you have four USB type A ports and one type C port. You're not gonna get things like USB 4 on this, but at the same time, you know, it's, it's it's a pretty decent loadout in terms of USB. And then you'll also see that we have a TF card slot. TF, you can think of as micro SD without the licensing. On the other side of this unit, you'll see that we have a total of six Intel i226V ports. Now these are two and a half gig ethernet ports and they are the newest spec. Some folks have had issues with the i226V, but we've actually, we have a bunch of these things. Like we have probably somewhere around a hundred ports of i226 and we really haven't seen those issues on the like kind of firewall type units. The other big feature is that we have a 12 volt DC input. Now I wanna talk about the chassis real quick. You'll see that this one actually has pretty large fins on top and a pretty dense fin configuration. So this is definitely a little bit bigger than some of the other you know, firewall units that we've reviewed. And I know a lot of folks are gonna compare this to something like the Protect Lee line, but the hardware in these just kind of feels like the Protect Lee is kind of like an older generation, um, but we'll talk a little bit more about that and compatibility and stuff later in this review. Okay, on the bottom of the unit, you're gonna see just kind of like the standard bottom that we see on a lot of these. Uh, it's one of the newer designs though, because we do have the ability to go and put things like a fan in here or something like that. One thing I will note though is just because of how this chassis is configured. If you do have a fan, I think you need to have like a 10 millimeter fan and like the, the uh, 80 millimeter or 80 by 80 by 10 millimeters fans are actually pretty hard to find or at least find good ones on. So I'm just gonna warn folks that, you know, if you do wanna put a fan in here, your options are gonna be a little bit limited. I just kind of feel like, especially if you're gonna try doing a very high performance system in one of these, uh, you'll probably end up wanting a fan. Okay, now looking inside the system, you're gonna see that we've changed this configuration a little bit. The original SSD uh, was one of these, which is a half terabyte unit from a brand that we've seen in some of the other like top 10 units, King Nova units, all that kind of stuff. We haven't really seen from like, it's not like a major US brand. This came installed with Windows 11 Pro, which was uh, kind of cool. And we've just kind of saved the SSD just for that. So if you did wanna have a Windows desktop with six two and a half gig Ethernet ports, you, I guess, could do that in this. In the system, we get two memory slots. Now, if you don't get the high like 64 gig configuration, you're most likely only gonna get one SO DIMM. These are DDR4 3200 SO DIMMs and you can go add more memory if you want up to 64 gigs. In the system, we have a WD Blue NVMe SSD just because we tend to use these because they are not really that fast, but they're also very low power and they don't generate a lot of heat. So in fanless systems, I like having these kind of like low power SSDs. And under the M.2 SSD slot, we get another slot which could be used for things like Wi-Fi. I'm kind of bummed that this didn't come with Wi-Fi, but that is an option that they offer. And uh, frankly, if I should have gotten it, that was a, that was an oversight. Now, something you'll see along this side is that we have the Intel SR. 
KTU NICs, which are the Intel i 26 v NICs. And something that is a little different is that they actually are lower power because they're, you know, the new spin versus the I225s. And what that means is that they're now on this side and they don't have an interface directly to the chassis for cooling. So that is something important. And that's also why I do like the idea of having a fan. You'll see that we do have a fan header in this. So if you do want to put a four pin fan or something like that, you could do that easily. Okay, so with that, let's get to the performance of this unit. Now, this is one of those processors that I really want to talk about in terms of the performance. And we only have one of the different versions and they offer a number of different processors. So I'm going to talk about the performance of what we saw, but I also want to talk about, well, what are the other things that you could possibly get as options and why we chose this one specifically? Okay, so first things first, the Intel Core i5-1235U is a 15 watt TDP processor. Now, of course, uh, we're going to probably be using a little bit more power than that. And we'll show you that in the power consumption section next. But I also just want to point out that this is a lower power our processor than some of the things that we've looked at recently. Like for example, we've looked at like Intel Nooks with the uh, like Core i7 1360p and stuff like that. And those uh, 1360p parts will offer about 2x the performance of what you get here. It's gonna change a little bit based on the benchmark and all that kind of stuff, but just roughly say that this is about half the performance of something like that. At the same time, if you were to compare this to something like the Pentium N6005 and 5105, or just, you know, an Intel Atom C uh, like 5315 or something like that, you know, you're gonna expect that you will get more than 2X the performance. And sometimes, you know, on the like four core parts, maybe like even up to 3X the performance. So, so performance wise, I mean, these things are much, much better because we have the newer E cores from Alder Lake as well as the two performance cores. So that combination I think is just really good. And just real quick, if we were to compare this unit versus the Protectly VP4630, just because this is still using a 10th gen core i3, you know, you're gonna see more than 2X of performance on the newer part. And if you did have like a core i5 version of this, you're probably still in that ballpark where you're getting like more than 50% more performance. So I think the big thing is that the newer Alder Lake platforms are just much higher performance than the 10th gen because it's, you know, two generations and a big generational change newer. The other big thing I wanna talk about in terms of performance though is the different options. So the different options, you can get a Pentium Gold 8505, which is uh, five cores, six threads. So you have like one, one P core. And then there's also a Core i5-1215U, which is six cores, eight threads. That one was actually really interesting, but the reason that I didn't get that one is the pricing wasn't that, that different. And you also, when you upgrade to the Core i5, you get the Intel uh, Iris XE graphics. The other one that did give me pause though is that there is a Core i7-1265U, and that one was really interesting because it has the same, you know, like 10 cores, 12 threads. So it's a very similar core configuration, but the frequency is much higher but that Core i7 costs a considerable amount more. And also just when these things are like thermal and power limited, you tend not to get a lot more performance if you're just getting a couple hundred extra megahertz because you tend to get downclocked anyway. So to me, I don't think that that Core i7 one was gonna be worth it. And that's why we chose the Core i5. It kind of had all of the features, but we're not paying that extra premium for the Core i7. But overall, either using it as a virtualization platform, a network router platform, or using it as a Windows desktop, the Windows desktop experience is much better than something like, you know, the N6005 or something like that, because you do have those P cores, so you have things that are single thread performance, like in the ballpark of like a desktop processor. So that I thought was super cool. Next, let's get to power consumption. We're not gonna do noise because, uh, well, there's, there's no sound in the system. Okay, so let's talk really quickly about the power consumption. There's really no noise, but I wanna talk a little about the heat and just kind of what we observed, right? So the first thing is that we got a Delta power supply with this, which I was super surprised. Usually you get some kind of very inexpensive power supply. Now this unit is, uh, you can see the little light right there. This is actually turned on. And uh, I just wanna show you the idle power consumption before we get too far. Uh, you know, you're gonna see right now that we're at about that, you know, 12, 13, 14 watt range. It does depend on the type of power supply. So some of these units come with much worse power supplies and you'll see a lot higher power consumption because of that. We're in Proxmox right now. So OS can make a difference. Um, and also just things like what P states and stuff like that, you know, you tune, you can do different things with this platform Form, but we're just kind of doing the stock configuration here. And I will just say at idle, uh, it's warm to the touch, but it's not crazy hot. And just kind of looking at the temps right now, uh, these things are at about 
3334C max. So at idle, not too bad at all. And I also just wanna note that when we're doing this, because we don't have Wi-Fi, we are connected via one of the two and a half gig links and it is linked up at two and a half gigs. Okay, so let's go start running a workload on this and just kind of show you what happens. And you're gonna see power consumption right now is like 70s, like 76, 70, something like that watts. So I mean, that's actually pretty decent power consumption. However, what you also see is that this system as you know, we've got a default is configured to clock down pretty quickly. So you get that like really quick spike up to like that mid seventies range. And now we're down into about 30 Watts or so. I will say that the chassis is pretty hot. It's uh, I can put my hand on it. You can see it's still, you know, running at that 30 ish watt range. Um, but, I, but I wouldn't want to leave it there for a long time. Um, it's, it's just not super comfortable, but it's not too, too bad. I do think though, if you did want to go and play with some of the higher performance levels, that's really where I would start looking at things like getting a unit with a fan. Some of these systems come with it. Some of them don't. So that would be something to ask the seller if you you know care about that and also just the power supply um, you know there's a big variance depending on which vendor you purchase from Now let's talk about OS's here for a little bit because that was one of the most painful things by far. And if you do go and buy something like this, I'm gonna tell you to go look at the STH forms. The STH forms have great resources for this. And one of the reasons that we just did this is we had a user ask about this unit because they were having troubles and we have such good resources that I thought I wanna go bring that out in a video. So let's talk about some of the funky things in this. First off, um, like, like hardware P states are not enabled by default. There is someone that has hacked the BIOS so you can go and you know get a version of BIOS with the P states because uh, a lot of people like that. There are also various power tuning options and all kinds of stuff that you can get in there. There are instructions about that all in the form thread. The other challenge though was really operating systems. Windows was installed by default, so we had Windows 11 Pro and that was easy to use. The next one though is OPN Sense. OPN Sense works out of the box and it was pretty darn easy to get that working because you just fire it up. PF Sense, we're still waiting for the version that supports the Intel i226 as of the time that we're recording this video. That means that you'd have to either use PF Sense Plus or a development version to be able to utilize this as a PF Sense router. But I think that just using this as a router for a lot of people, this is gonna be way overkill, especially with the P cores and having all those E cores. I just think that this is too much for that. And so what I think a lot of people are gonna do is they're gonna install something like Ubuntu, or maybe they're gonna install something like Proxmox and go run a virtualization host, which I think is a pretty good use case for this. However, when when you do that, um, Brian was installing this and he was like, hey, uh, like nothing's installing. Like, why doesn't this work? Like the installers just shut down. So it turns out that both the Ubuntu 2204, the like current versions of that, as well as Proxmox, we tested up to, I think 7.4. Um, they, they all have issues with a like kernel driver and this box. Proxmox is super interesting though. What you do is you actually install Proxmox VE 7.1. You then go and install the new kernel. So you can opt into a new kernel for Proxmox and then you can upgrade to 7.4 and everything works perfectly fine after that. Now, if you didn't watch this video and you haven't seen that form thread, you're probably cursing at this box. But now that I've told you to go look for it, you'll make it, you know, you'll fix this in five, 10 minutes. To me though, I don't love the fact that you have to go do all that extra work. Something that's nice on the Protectly box is that everything just kind of works out of the box. You may be using older NICs and older processor and get way less performance and be paying more, but at least the Protectly box works uh, easily. But I do think that it's worth talking about the pricing on these and what's the difference. So configured with 16 gigabytes of memory and a half terabyte NVMe SSD, I think this box is around $575. Coupons change that a little bit and discounts and all that kind of stuff, but call about $575. And we'll just note that that also included Windows 11. The bare bones on the system though is, you know, call it about $465 plus or minus a couple based on discounts. You'll save about $160, $170 going down to the Pentium Gold uh, 8505, but that's a, a big change on both the CPU and GPU side. You can also get the Core i3 version, that's about $95 less based on the day. Again, going down on cores and as well as GPU. But going to the Core i7 where you get that extra like 400 megahertz, but then you also get the you know same iris graphics, you get the same core config as the Core i5, that's like another $160. So like, I, I just couldn't justify that because I just you're just never gonna get that performance or that much perf extra performance to justify that Delta in price. I do think though that it would be wise to just get the bare bones unit and then just install your own SSD and RAM because that would probably be way less expensive. So I think the summary in terms of pricing is that if you get this Protectly unit, um, you know, it's it's something like $679. So it's it's roughly, you know, $300 bare bones more than the Chang Wang unit. They're both, uh, you know, made in China. If you look at the bottom of them, they don't have things like UL markings or FCC markings or anything like that. So either one, you know, I think is about the same on that. I will say though, that because of the older hardware, the Protectly one 
and in fact, you can get the core boot and stuff like that if you care. Um, you know, the, the Protect Lee one, I think it was much easier, but on the other hand, you're paying $300 on a $465, $470 box for that ease. And things like installing Proxmox, once you do it once, it's five, 10 minutes. And so, you know, if, if, if 10 minutes of your time is worth more than $300, then, um, you know, I totally think that the Protect Lee makes a lot of sense, or if you just don't want to deal with it. But if you want a better performance at a lower cost and you're willing to eat the five, 10 minutes to get Proxmox working, uh, frankly, I would get the Chang Wang unit any day. Hey guys, I hope you like this look of this really cool six, two and a half gig ethernet Alder Lake box. I just think this is really cool. And it's something that's a different platform. It has those P cores. So it has a different performance profile than a lot of the other fanless units that we've been using. I know we got a lot of requests for this one, especially after we did the AMD Ryzen one that was not fanless. And so I wanted to make sure that we covered this off. Personally, I went from hating this because Brian couldn't set it up to actually kind of liking it once we got the all the workarounds, we got the new BIOS, all that kind of stuff going. And so definitely if you do buy this thing or you want to buy this thing, the first thing I would tell you to do is go look at the form thread. We have a link in the description that has all of the information that you could possibly want to know about tweaking and tuning these things. And hey, if you did like this video, well, why don't you give it a like, click subscribe and turn on those notifications so you can see whenever we come out with great new videos. As always, thanks for watching. Have an awesome day.